Omar El Jaziri, the head fencing coach at the Air Force Academy, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for taking the time to answer some questions from fans and supporters. Thank you, Brian, for having me. It's my pleasure. Thank you. The first question uh, all the coaches have been asked basically is, how are you doing? There's a nationwide pandemic going on. There's, there's other things going on in the nation that, that are uh, crazy at this time. How are you and your family? Are you okay? Are you safe? And uh, just let us know. I'm, I'm doing pretty good. I'm uh, a little bit uh, trying to adjust on the new normal, personally. My family are doing good. Uh, I'm checking on with all the staff. All the staff is doing great. Although, funny thing, all my staff, are their families are overseas. So Kiara's Italian, I'm the Egyptian, and I'm Egyptian. So our family actually not in the States. But all of us are doing fine. Also, the only one who's, who's like, family are here is uh, Sarah Cooper. She's also fine. Jimmy Moody is fine. So checking, all, checking in with everybody. We're all doing great and uh, trying to keep in contact. We're checking in almost every other day together. So, yeah. That's good. That, good. That, that, that's great to hear. Um, yeah. Tell us how the season ended. I know fencing is really almost a, a, an entire academic year long season, really, mm -hmm. with all of the seasons that you have. Kind of tell us, though, because you, you weren't allowed to compete in the NCAAs and you had five uh, athletes that would have done that. Um, tell us kind of how the season ended and how your athletes took it, how you took it, how your staff took it. I'm not going to lie. It was a bummer. We we were working consistently throughout the season, as you mentioned. It's pretty long season. We start our first meet uh, October, and then we continue through March. And then, funny thing, right before the lockdown, we had our regional at the academy, and uh, we competed at regional, and it was fine. But still, the pandemic started earlier in Europe, and we still we still didn't have it here. So it was a little bit nerve wracking, hosting other teams and all this kind of stuff. So we were a little bit nervous, but we got it under control. We were in a, a great uh, West uh, Regional and everything went, was going very smooth. And then the pandemic happened and it was a little bit hard on all of us. It's uh, not only on me personally, it was even harder on the cadets, on the people who qualified mainly. So we got five of them qualified. So it was pretty hard to, to deliver the news and to actually be waiting for it. Every day after regionals, regional ended on March 8th. And then we were sitting and waiting, are we going to championships or not? Every day we're checking in with Mr. Pine. Mr. Pine say, we're still going. So and still training, fencing, cadets are coming every day to practice. So we we're holding on that hope to go. But then after this, I, I I remember it was March 15th or 16th when we get the news about the NCAA that's not going to happen. And it was pretty devastating because like, it was like three days before we traveled. So that was harsh on the fencers for sure, harsh on the staff, on everybody. So, but we took it well and we continue. You, you do have one senior, I'm curious, Leanne Singleton Comfort. Uh, one of the best fencers arguably ever in Air Force Academy history. How, how did she take it? Because for her, the rest of them will have a chance to hopefully compete again at another, you know, championship tournament, but she's done. It would have been her fourth, but yeah. you know, usually you're, you're, you you save your best for last. How did she take it? And uh, you know, it's great that she has a job and all of that, but mm -hmm. you know, her fencing career is pretty much over. Well, we will go back to her fencing career part. It's not over, hopefully. But uh, first, uh, I can't talk enough about Leanne. It just she's an inspiration for me personally. It's a great fencer, a great attitude, and uh, definitely was was heartbreaking to see her going through this. She saved so much. She waited. Actually, even she was redshirted last year. She didn't compete. She said, "I want to go hard in the senior, my senior year," and she was going in favor, not only just to make All-American, just actually to win. She was one of the top four, uh, top five going in all over the country. So she was going in to win it. And we heard the news literally every day. She was reaching out to me, reaching out to Hamdi to figure out, are we going or not? Did I just wait it and I'm not going to compete? So it was very hard, but the way she handled it, the way she pushed back and 
called herself, I was inspiring in that way because it's not easy to take that decision and know that you're not going to fence again in NCAA championship and to, to be just, it's fine. I've done it before. She was going to win. So I'm impressed with her, how she handled that. So that's definitely hats off for her for being able to handle herself and to be okay with that decision. Then she's still training. She's still pursuing. I'm not sure if you know this part or not, but she's pursuing her Olympic dream. She is an Olympic hopeful for 2021 and 2024. So fencing career is not done yet. She's she's going to pursue and hopefully uh, she'll get in the WK program and continue to work on that. So we'll that, see. She's, strong. She's, she's a strong one. She's a tough one. Yes, she is. Thanks for uh, pointing that out. That's awesome. I didn't know about that. Yeah, hopefully she gets into that WCAT program. We'd love to see her in the Olympics and because she really is uh, one of the best in the world. So it would be awesome to see her compete again. Um, I want to point out that I'm speaking today, everyone, with the Western Conference Coach of the Year. Uh, Congratulations first, Omar. That, that's, that's amazing for a first year coach to be the, you know, the entire West region, basically coach of the year. H how did you feel when you, when you heard that news? Uh, to be honest, surprised, honored, happy, make a mix of many feelings, you know, like uh, I didn't see it coming. I still a younger coach and also this sort of year. Uh, that's my first year as a head coach. I didn't see that coming. I wasn't expecting it. And then it was a huge honor for me, and uh, it was great. So I'm very, very happy and excited about this. So I guess I'm lucky. It's not just me who get to this point. It's the entire teamwork. Like, it's the entire staff that I have that supports me, starting from Sarah Cooper, uh, Jimmy Moody, uh, Ahmed Hamdi, and Carol Tranquilli. And not only the staff, the team itself. I can't tell you how how much I like. I'm, I love this team and I love working with this team. They make it they make the job very easy, you know. And then the other thing is even the athletic department in general, the support everybody gives to me, you know. Like even you, Brian, you're just like you welcome me. You're supporting me. So like I just feel the support from everybody. So I'll say just I'm lucky to be in that environment, this loving environment, and it really helps. So I appreciate that from all of you. Thanks. Well, we appreciate you and what you've, you've done. And I think that's just a remarkable achievement for you and your team, really, to be named Coach of the Year. Um, that's one of the fans' questions, though, is like, how would you describe your first season, you know, as a head coach at the academy? What, what, were, what were some things that I guess that you learned through this last year? Definitely patient, because the, 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 this job is completely unique and different. Being a head coach is different than being an assistant, there is many things that circle back and come back to you. Like when you, when you are assistant, you have a huge responsibilities. But at some point when I start to be, like when I, when I became a head coach, I had so many responsibilities on my plate. And even if it's not specifically my responsibility, it circled back and come back to me. So it taught me to be patient and to be understanding and to always be focused on what need to be done, prioritizing the jobs and be always aware that at the end of the day, you work throughout the season, not for one goal, but for many goals. So it is a huge experience and I'm very honored to be in that position. So. Is, there anything that you, is there anything that you learned uh, that you maybe weren't expecting and now you, well, I guess I'm trying to get that. Is there a nugget that you can give us that maybe something that you learned that, wow, I'm glad I learned this in my first year because moving forward, I'm going to do things maybe a little bit differently or I'll, I'll know that. But again, many lessons have, uh, I have learned. I cannot, like, I, can, I cannot list, list them all. For example, again, I said, like, coming back after Coach Helen, the great, amazing coach, 20 years with that team, so filling in the shoes for this amazing coach was very, very hard for, for, for starters. And uh, that's something I've learned. It can, you have to be patient to slowly and gradually live up to that trust from the academy and from the AD and then also to fill in that shoes and to gain the respect of the team and all this kind of stuff. So there is many things I've learned. I, I, we can sit and talk here for hours and I can share, of course, all this. But yeah. 
Okay. Uh, we'll stop you there then. Uh, amazing season though. You had a program record, five all Americans this year, five fencers that would have gone to the NCAAs. Obviously we already mentioned Leanne Singleton comfort, Aaron Shea also on the ladies saber side. And, and then uh, you had uh, Levin, I don't want to butcher his name, but we have Han and also yeah. the Canadian. Um, yeah. Five fencers. Speak to us about those five fencers and maybe what led to their success. It's, uh, I will start even not out of the fencing team, how we breed the fencers here or how we breed the cadets in general, uh, the core values of the academy. To be honest, this is one of the most amazing places you will work in. It's just like you come there, you know that every cadet in this in the in the academy is dedicated and humble and uh, hungry. All these amazing core values is like it's kind of squeezed in one person. So as a coach, I'm lucky to work with those guys. So it's easy. Like for example, Nestor, he academically he's a one, I think his GPA GPA is 3.8 something and a mechanical engineer so not only that he is amazing fencer also he's an amazing student and he's pursuing that uh, academic field so i'm very proud of him same as aaron shea same matthew Hahn is a younger uh, uh, well rising uh, sophomore right now and uh, steven comedian and uh, of course leanne who just can keep going and talking about her so that being said that all those guys have been like been working with it's they have they have it they have the ability to get there and to achieve their their goal you know my job is is to help those guys and to guide them through but they all know what they are doing because again the academy put them on the right path breed them right and just all they have to do is just pursue their dream and continue the academy will offer them the academy, the academy offer them everything they needed and all they have to do is just like continuously keep working that's good um, interesting question uh, how do you recruit for fencing as as it says here it, with it not being a traditional american sport there aren't a lot of collegiate fencing teams i don't know you can maybe enlighten us as to how many clubs there are around the country how do you go about um fencing recruiting for your team well just to to Touch some point that well, fencing is getting more popular. The NGB of the fencing uh, is have done an amazing job in the past ten years. F fencing is getting really popular in the country right now. There's many colleges has a fencing program. I call it 27. Uh, if I'm not wrong, could be wrong, but uh, yeah, is a big number of colleges that has fencing uh, programs right now, and it's pretty competitive. The question is how we actually winning that competition there's the big 10 uh, or the state colleges are very competitive in recruiting ivs but what i do is simply i just go to the recruits or the prospects and just tell them like you want to be set for life come to air force you know and as, especially now with all what we have with uncertainty and all these kind of things right now nobody knows what will happen tomorrow well at the academy three months before you graduate, you know, what will you do, where you will be living, and how much you'll be making. So this is like, how many other institutions can offer that, you know? So this is just a small trick of how we can recruit, you know, it's, it's pretty simple. We're one of the greatest institutions in the country that we offer so much. So. What do you look for in a fencer? Um, obviously, you know, we've gone before, people seen our interviews before, you've talked about the three disciplines. Obviously, mm -hmm. there's, there's lots of different athletes that you're looking at, but are there certain things you're looking at in particular and the way they fence, or is it the way they carry themselves? What do you look for in a fencer to bring them onto your team? Depending on the demand we need on the, on the program on that year. For example, if, if we're set on men's epi, for example, we need to, or men's foil or men's saber, we need to work more on women's side. So we focus more on recruiting women's, for example, if that makes sense. Then we had, we had Leanne, now we need to push to get another Leanne, for example, you know? So we need to focus on the sabers women. So it really varies from year to another, what we will, who we will choose, what we need for the program. So 
most likely academic is very important we need to look for somebody who is stable academically because this is going to hurt them first if they come here and they are not prepared academically air force is really one of the unique and hardest institution top level uh, colleges in the country you know so you're not going to get by by lower grades or average grade you have to be a one so academic is very important when we look for recruiting then again i just will look for the uh, fencing side after this and what the program need at this moment another question from the fans what are the biggest lessons that a fencer learns from the sport you fence you were very uh, you very good at it uh, your fiance very good at it <laughs> so you you should know I guess, what does this sport teach that maybe some other sports or maybe that you don't learn if you're not in a sport at all? I'll say, it might sound cheesy, but fight till the end, honestly, and never give up. I have seen so many bouts or matches that a, a, a fencer is losing badly in a match and then they keep fighting and they turn the bout or turn the match and come back at the last second, literally the last second. So. This is a very, very important lesson that every fencer know. You just keep fighting till the last moment, till you empty the tank. So this is the biggest lesson in my opinion for anybody who wants to start fencing or want to know what fencing teaches you the most. Fight till the end and never give up. How do you relay that to an athlete? I know that like, uh, say you have someone fencing and they're way behind. So you call timeout and you call them over. I'm curious what you say to them at that point. I, I, obviously, they already know you've told them, don't give up. But is there something Is there something else that they can call upon in that moment when they're down, you know, several points in a match to come back? Well, control your emotions first. And then look at the, at the end line or like look at, see the end line, but don't celebrate too early. That's the advice I'll say. But most likely, as I mentioned before, one of my interviews with you as there's three aspects it's not physical and it's not mental it's also emotional so you have to control your emotion and to be uh to be aware of what's going inside so if i'm if i'm fighting brian or i'm fencing you i cannot celebrate before finishing the match i cannot do that emotionally of course mentally too so this is the idea just like stay in the moment keep fighting and just leave the right in the moment. Don't jump ahead and say, I'm five points ahead. I already won the bout, you know? Don't celebrate too early. That's a good word. Um, I'm curious, this isn't in our fans question, but I'm just curious. So can you give us a little background and tell us um, why did you start fencing? What was it about fencing that made you want to fence? It's a long story. It goes back uh, 20 years ago. Because well, when I start sport, I start I was a, uh, like a professional swimmer. I competed for the national team in Egypt and I was a swimmer, solid. And after this, my elder brother who lives still in Egypt, he competed at Sydney Olympic Games. He did the he did a modern pentathlon, which is running, swimming, fencing, shooting, and horseback riding. And that, that sport has just attracted me. Like I wanted to do, I wanted to do it all. And I start going to practice to him and I picked up the pentathlon and I pursued. And while I was training and competing for the pentathlon, then I fall in love in fencing. So I'm an epi fencer, or I was an epi fencer, and then I just continue fencing and then do it uh, simultaneously. So I was fencing and I competed in fencing competition. And in the meantime, I also competed at the pentathlon competition, World Cups. And uh, after this, I competed at the Olympics in 2016 for the modern pentathlon. While I was doing this, I was also coaching and training fencing. So I just fall in love with fencing, and that's how I start. That's my story with fencing. That's a, that's a good story. Um, Thanks. Do you, like I know you've done a lot of things around the athletic department. You you brought uh, me, you brought others, uh, uh, Mr. Pine and, and uh, Colonel Block in and showed them how to fence. You seem to have a really heart for the sport and and. Do you find that when you introduce people to the sport, that they're enthusiastic about it, that their that their level of um, respect, at least for their sport, goes up? Yeah. Again, as I said on that uh, meeting when we have Mr. Pine, Miss Miss Block, it's not about 
winning or losing. It's about how you manage your emotion and your mental uh, thoughts while you're moving physically. I'm fencing Brian and I want to hit him, but in the meantime, I want to respect him. I want to fight. It's a mix of emotion. So this is something very rare to find in any other sports, if that makes sense. That, this is my personal opinion too. You know, you want to stab somebody, but in the meantime, you respect them, you shake hands after that, and you, you keep respect, you know? So this is, this is why I find this sport is very unique and how uh, different than any other sport. And that's how I try to deliver to other people and to present it to other people. Did you, do, you, do you ever find that there are athletes, maybe even on a team in your past or club or, or even this current team, that maybe don't quite understand that? Or do you every year remind your athletes that, hey, we're always going to respect our opponents? Yeah, I, I don't find it harder now with the academy because, again, as I said, the core values are very important. All the cadets are great, period. That's, this is the bottom line of it. But back when I worked in clubs and you worked with younger kids, you really have to emphasize those core values and uh, to, to emphasize on respecting others. So those things I used to deal with when I worked with younger, uh, with younger people, but with that society I'm working in right now, it's a little bit easier. I don't have to do that because people are already trained and know that respect is an important thing in all aspects of our, of our life. That's awesome. Uh, another question from the fans. This is a tough one, coach. I don't know. How do you replace someone like Leanne Singleton Comfort? Tough question. You're right. Absolutely. I will uh, respond to that. I'll say, well, it's, she's not re replaceable. In fact, no one in the team is replaceable. I can't tell you how sad I am to see my senior class leaving or the lieutenant right now already left. It's heartbreaking. You can see those guys have put the work, stayed with the team for four years, and just leaving. I have three of those seniors already went to a grad school right now. They, are, they graduated, they are second lieutenant, but in the meantime, they also are going to grad school. Helen is Helen Landwer. She graduated and she got accepted in MIT, and she's going now to get a grad school there. Mm -hmm. uh, Trisha Dang. She went, she got um, accepted on the um, uh, um, uh, Georgia institution. And uh, Alison uh, Wong, which is Alison, Alison Wong, which is also getting an uh, Air Force Institution of Technology. So those three already are set to get a, uh, a master's degree right now. Back to Leanne, I'm going to say she's, she's, a, she's amazing. She's pursuing her Olympic dream, she's working very hard. What I will say, we have many other fencers in the team. We have Aaron Shea, we have all the other four who qualified to champion, championship, and we have the incoming freshmen, like the prospect. And I will say, to find somebody to match, like to, to get to Leanne's level, we just have to put the warp in. I'm going to push Hamdi more because it's Sabre territory, his territory, so we have more work now to do. But again, is Leanne is not replaceable. She's, she'll always have a place in our heart. She'll always be one of the best fencers that came to the academy. So we can't replace her, but we can get more Leanne's in the team or more new fencers and to have the same level of Leanne. Yeah, I, I, I like that answer. Does it also help, though, in recruiting and in um, just kind of motivating your current athletes that they see that the level that she got to, does it help motivate them to say, yeah, I can do that too? Absolutely. That's, I mentioned that in, on our last interview because, again, when she was fencing, the end was 99% guarantees that she will make championships. But then that's the point that Aaron Shea said, well, I want to go to championship too. I need to fight. I need to look up to Leanne and to follow these steps. And that's what happened. Erin stepped up big time. She was going in at six and she finished second and she qualified to championship. So yeah, of course, having Leanne in the team is such an inspiration for all the fencing team. And it's definitely a good point for us for recruiting. So yeah. Uh, the final question here from the fans is, what are you most looking forward to next season? And probably it's that you get through an entire season and actually have yeah. championships. But uh, what, what do you think? 
uh, to be honest and with, to start is just just going back to normality, going to see my team, going to work with my team, going to see my colleagues, seeing all the staff back in the gym, seeing us all dancing and see that joy we are kind of deprived of right now. You know, we don't have, we don't fence. So that's the most important thing I can't wait to see back again. The other thing is our new uh, team captains, Matty Good and uh, Adel and Tiguia, those, those amazing rising seniors. Which is, I'm very excited for them. They are already a great leader and I can't wait to see what they'll do with the team next year. And uh, of course, our incoming freshmen who are amazing. We get a big group, nine incoming freshmen coming in. So I'm excited for those Spencer to join the team and see what they can do with, with the current team. That's awesome. Is there anything else you'd like to talk about or, or anything else you wanted to say to either your team, your fans, people who support you? Maybe that's a, if there are fencing alumni out there who would like to support your program, maybe how, how could, how could they help you at this time? Yeah, I would say, first of all, again, I said, I'm just going to say thank you to everybody who welcomed me to the program, who supported me starting from the freshmen in the team throughout all the alumni, but you can't, I can't tell you how many alum give, give, send me an email or give me a call and just encourage me and supported me. So I want to thank all the alums and parents, team, staff, you guys, everybody. Just like, I want to tell them, stay strong. We'll come back. We will fence. And we we're just going gonna to get back stronger. So just hang tight. That's what I will say. And uh, yeah, I can't. I can't thank everybody enough for all the support that we're getting through the fencing team. Well, we, we can't thank you enough for the, the work that you've done with those fencers, and I'm sure they, uh, they feel the same about you. I mean, coach of the year, record, record All-Americans, uh, and just, you're just doing a great job. Thank you so much for taking the time today, Omar, and um, stay safe, and hopefully we'll see you back in the gym fencing very soon. Thank you, Brian. You too, and uh, thank you all. Thank you. Go Falcons.